Hello everyone! Come back with me, Spencer. My name is Spencer. Uh, today, I am very cheerful. First time, firstly, I want to thank Dr. Wang for giving me the opportunity to share my knowledge again with me. Today, I want to share an interesting topic. The topic is uh, about ACL. As we know, the ACL is more popular injury in sport in the world. Such as this injury maybe may happen in sport such as football, track and fall, rugby, and also swimming. Ah. First, I want to gonna tell you what mean by ACL. ACL mean uh, anterior cruciate ligament. A ligament in the knee that cross crosses from the underside of the femur, the tight bone, to the top of the tibia, the bigger bone in the lower leg. Abbreviated ACL injury to the ACL can occur in a number of situations, including sport and keep it quiet, serious equipment. Next is uh, I'm gonna tell you about the symptom of LCL. The symptom of LCL injury usually include a lot of a lot of pop pop. Um, some of we can hear the sound of the popping sensation in the knee. I don't know what to tell you about the sound of sound of pop. Next is. Next symptom is uh, severe pain and inability to continue at activity. After that is a uh, rapid swelling, and that we can know that a rapid swelling is the symptom or one the symptom of SL injury. Next is loss of range of motion. After that, a feeling instability or giving way with weight bearing. Also, I want to tell you about the causes. Ligament a strong band of tissue that connect one bone to another. The ACL one of the two ligaments that cross in the middle of the knee. Connect your tight bone, femur to your single tibia and help you stabilize your knee joint. ACL injury often happen during sport and fitness activity that can put stress on the knee. Suddenly slowing down. Changing direction, people think with your foot firmly planted, landing awkwardly from a jump, stopping suddenly, receiving direct direct blow blow to the knee or collisions such as football tackle. Next is a uh, factor risk factor. There are a number of risk factors increase your risk and NCL, including being a female, which believe you different in anatomy, muscle strength and hormone influence. The, the next factor is participating in certain sports such as soccer, football, basketball, gymnastics and downhill skying. So that is for conditioning. After that is wearing food. Well, that doesn't fit properly. Ah, this really we need to uh, well the spot properly. It's very important to avoid we from others injury. Next is uh using fully maintained sport equipment such as sky binding that are adjusted properly playing on artificial turf surfaces. First, for the floor prevention, I would proper training exercise help reduce of SSL injury. All sport medicine physician, basic physical therapist, athletic trainer or other specialists in sport medicine can provide assessment, instruction and feedback they can Help you reduce risk program program to reduce as it include exercise the strength the legs muscle 
particularly hamstring exercise to ensure the end of balance muscle strength. After that is we need to do some exercise to strengthen the core, including hips, pelvis, and lower abdomen. Training and exercise in precise, proper technique and knee position when jumping and landing from jumps. Training to improve technique when performing pivoting and cutting movement. Training to strengthen muscle of the leg, hip, core, as well training to improve jumping, landing, technique. May help to reduce his higher injury stress which is a big moment. For the more information, you all need to watch the video. Okay, you can watch the video. Okay guys, Revo PT back with another video. I'm Dane, this is Matt. We want to talk about ACL injury prevention. So, we know that non-contact ACL injuries are preventable. We have movement profiles that are shown in running, jumping, cutting that give us a great idea of who's most at risk for ACL injuries. What we want to look at today is a couple of the keystones for our either diagnosis or increased risk or rehab after you've experienced an injury. So. A couple things that we look at are, uh, are number one, knee valgus. So knee valgus is basically a combination of a couple movements. We think of internal rotation and hip adduction. We think of basically a medial collapse at the knee and the foot. Okay. We think of quad dominance. If Matt is in a quad dominant squat, he has a vertical trunk. A lot of times he has an arch in that low back. Knees translate anteriorly. He's putting a lot of stress here on the quad, not quite so much on the butt, which is gonna control that rotation at the femur. We think about poor trunk control. So if Matt is cutting, if he's cutting to his left, oftentimes we'll see trunk lean moving away from the direction he's going. Um, we think about medial foot collapse. We talked about that with kind of the collapse in the knee valgus. If Matt's foot is caving in, that can predispose him to let the knee follow along. We look at asymmetries, right versus left. That could be strength, that could be in the way that you move. And then another thing we look at is poor shock absorption or a stiff leg strategy. So if Matt is doing, say, a deceleration here, when Matt sticks that, we see that very stiff leg. We know that a lot of ACL injuries, and that, that might have hurt Matt's knee a little. A lot of ACL injuries happen here, close to full knee extension, versus getting deep down into that cut. When Matt's decelerating or changing direction, we want him to use his glute and his quad like a spring. Exactly. When we use that, we get those contractile tissues controlling the path of the knee versus letting your body get stiff, let the trunk move wherever it wants. When Matt controls that position, he keeps that knee on top of the foot and ankle versus tracking anteriorly or in front of the toes or medially on the inside of the foot. We like to use video capture to put objective measures on all these movements. So we use small little reflective markers and LEDs to track those. We want to put real numbers on these movements. So we, number one, we can get a baseline assessment, say preseason, but number two, we can track what our training is doing to these movements. We want objective movements to make decisions for, say, readiness to play or return to sport. So let's go to the other side. Let's say, you injured your knee, ACL injury. The traditional return to sport path is on a timeline based criteria. Six months, nine months, one year, whatever it is. We're trying to get away from that. Timeline means nothing. When you can hit those objective measures, you can decelerate with shock absorption, control from the hip, no knee valgus, however long that takes, if it takes six months, great. If it takes 18 months, so be it. We know that a lot of the deficits we see post-op ACL are seen for two years plus. And a lot of people are getting returned to sport clearance at six months. 
those retail rates are very, very high. We know the number one predictive factor for ACL injury is having had a previous ACL injury. You want to take the utmost care at that point to make sure your movements are clean, you have great strength right versus left, we don't see any asymmetries, and all of those movement patterns are well ingrained. It's easy to do it one time in the gym, but we need to add fatigue into that. So we want to make sure you can do it two hours in after a full event. And then we look the SCL surgery, anterior cruciate ligament surgery. For the review, SCL cruciate surgery is uses a graft to refresh the ligament. The most common graft are autograph using part of your own body, such as tendon of knee cap patella or ones of the hamstring tendon. Sometimes the quadriceps tendon from above the kneecap is used. Another choice is allograft tissue, which is taken from the decreased ulnar repair surgery, typically used only the cast and abyssal fracture, aspiration ligament, and piece of the bone from the rest of the bone in the cast. In the cast, the bone fragment connected to be ACL retirement to the bone. SCS is usually actually done by making small incision, knee and inserting instrument instrument for surgery through the through this injection named by arthroscopic surgery. In some cases, it is done by cutting a large inject injection in the knee open surgery. SCS surgery is are done by orthopedic surgeon. Now we look to uh, this video. We want to look how they, how the process of SCL, uh, how how the process surgery for the SCL injury. For ACL is one of the four main ligaments connecting the femur to the tibia. The ACL provides stability as you move your knee. A torn ACL may occur if your knee joint over-rotates or if you receive a direct blow to the front of your knee. If your ACL tears through completely, your doctor may recommend surgery to repair it. Before your procedure, you will receive either spinal anesthesia, which will numb your body from the chest down, or general anesthesia, which will put you to sleep for the duration of the procedure. During this arthroscopic procedure, your surgeon will make a few incisions around your knee, through which he or she will insert surgical instruments, including a camera. The camera will transmit images to a TV monitor, which the surgeon will view during the procedure. First, your surgeon will remove the remaining portions of your torn ACL from your knee. Then your surgeon will remove part of your patellar tendon to use as the graft or obtain donor tissue. Your surgeon will create attachment points for the graft by drilling a small tunnel in the end of your tibia, then another at the end of your femur. Your surgeon will place one end of the patellar tendon graft in the tibial tunnel. Then he or she will pull the graft up through the knee joint and into the femoral tunnel to create a new ACL tendon. Finally, your surgeon will place small screws in the tunnels at either end of the new ACL to hold it in place. Over the next six to eight weeks, bone growth will fill in these tunnels, further stabilizing the graft. At the end of the procedure, your doctor will remove the instruments and close the incisions. This procedure typically lasts two to two and a half hours. After the procedure, you will go to the recovery room for two to three hours and then go home. You will likely need a knee brace and crutches for one to four weeks. Supervised physical therapy should begin two or three days after surgery and continue for six to ten weeks. After this time, continue with self-directed therapy as long as needed. It takes about nine months for a reconstructed ACL to fully heal. You should avoid contact sports, racket sports, and other sports that require rapid direction changes until you obtain approval from your physician. After that, we want to look the specific SEL in non-contact sport between contact sport. Look through this picture.
How oh, next time if you want to get more information about sports you may stay tuned with me. Okay, thank you. Oh